Humans are a funny species. We investigate the depths of space and spend trillions searching for habitable places off world, along with trying to find ways to get there. Yet, while it may seem like we have a good understanding of our own planet, when you really think about it, we've only just scratched the surface, pun fully intended. Though the ocean makes up 70% of the earth, scientists say that over 80% of it is unmapped and unexplored. And the crazy thing is, that's not even what we're talking about today. No, today we want to go so much deeper. Today, we're going to explore the mysteries and conspiracies involving what's inside the earth itself. And before we jump in, you might've heard recently that we're about to launch the new conspiracy theory of everything. However, censorship on the internet is a real thing today and a big problem. So we're doing our due diligence and have put together a free library of content on our website where we can share stuff with you without fear of it being censored. Click the link in the comments below to gain access to all of this material, just in case anything gets removed from YouTube when we publish it. Okay, Hollow Earth, let's do this. Of the 4,000 miles of depth, we've only ever dug eight miles down. That's insane. It's like living in a mansion with 500 rooms and only ever going in one of them. Is it possible that our earth has massive inside caves or even worlds underneath that remain hidden from us surface dwellers? Seriously, what's up with so many ancient myths talking about this exact same thing? Now, scientists have been talking about hollow earth for at least 400 years now. One of the oldest hollow earth hypotheses comes from a man named Edmund Halley, the one who discovered Halley's Comet, who proposed that the earth would have a solid core and two more inner spheres with space in between, each rotating at its own speed. Others have added on that as you progress down each ring, you may even encounter more and more advanced civilizations. It's also rumored that prolific mathematician, Leonard Euler proposed a hollow earth model where the core is kind of like a miniature sun, where the surface is kind of like what we have today, but inside out. And what many of these theories have in common was that some sort of entrance to these realms existed at our Earth's poles in Antarctica and the Arctic. Today, even with all of the flat Earth conspiracies, there are still some pretty big speculation about the existence to entrances of inner Earth somewhere on the surface. Perhaps not just at the poles too, but all over the planet. Who knows? Perhaps these flat Earth conspiracies are all a ruse to try and distance humanity from the conversation that the planet very well may be hollow. Unless it is flat, in which case, the hollow earth would just be on the other side. One of the most interesting things about all of these hollow earth theories is that deep inside the earth, there are other civilizations that are probably a lot more harmonious than we are today. That, or, you know, giant kaiju monsters. Geez, Japan can't build their life-size Gundam fast enough. But anyway, this idea isn't actually new. In fact, multiple ancient religions have independently come up with stories of similar subterranean realms from the Tibetan Buddhists Christians, Jews, Greeks, and the Nordics, all having some element of myth and folklore referencing, basically, a hollow earth. While many of these cultures place their idea of a mythical hell beneath the earth's surface, some of them, including Buddhists, believed that ancient civilizations like Shambhala or Agartha, way advanced beyond our own, inhabited the deep underground. In fact, Shambhala was said to have an entrance in the Himalayas and was the inspiration behind the mythical city of Shangri-La, where the fountain of youth was said to be. As history progressed, we also saw the myth of hollow earth evolve. And as secret societies crop up, so do the possible connections with what mysteries may lie beneath. Some people believe that hollow earth and its entrances have been discovered already. There's even a conspiracy theory that Hitler found a cave in the ocean, which led to the earth's habitable interior where he escaped. Perhaps that's what Disney's Atlantis was actually all about. Other theories say that alien races or even the Illuminati are hiding beneath our feet where they can pull strings and influence the surface world in complete secrecy. Uh, but Patchman, I've been to school. I've seen the posters. The earth is solid all the way through to its molten core. There isn't any possibility that life could survive or even fit down there. Yes, yes, of course. We all know what science tells us about the internal structure of the planet, but it's important to question how we came to this conclusion. As we said earlier, we have only ever observed eight miles deep into the earth. So it isn't the fact that we've observed this that makes scientists believe it, but rather assumptions made by studying seismic data. You see, there are different types of waves that propagate from an earthquake. And depending on what types of waves reach certain parts of the earth, scientists estimate what structure the earth is 
through the knowledge that liquid and solid regions allow different types of waves to move through them. While the evidence does seem to show that the Earth is not fully hollow, it doesn't rule out the existence of significant amounts of space existing within the Earth itself. In the early 1800s, some scientists started looking for entrances to subterranean Earth with the goal of seeing if anything like this truly existed. And in time, a strong urge to explore the poles for these entrances bubbled up, but official expeditions largely fell through. So what exactly happened in these early expeditions? Well, after the excitement generated from scientists like Halley about the possibility of a hollow Earth, some planned expeditions tried to see for themselves. The most famous for these expeditions has to be that of Admiral Byrd in the 1900s, a World War II veteran and noted polar explorer and pioneer. Byrd attempted the very first flyover of the North Pole in 1926, and at some point turned around due to an oil leak in his aircraft, and it's debated whether or not he actually made it. Over the next two decades, Byrd would revisit the South Pole on expeditions three separate times, the final one being at the request of Franklin D. Roosevelt and funded by the US government. After serving in World War II, receiving a Medal of Honor, he continued his pioneering of the polar regions. It's worth noting that these large expeditions were some of the earliest thorough explorations of the region. And if anything mysterious or powerful was found, then it was the US government who had the first dibs and the power to keep that knowledge a secret. In 1984, years after Byrd passed away, a mysterious diary credited to him from 1947 surfaced. This diary included a log detailing a flight Byrd supposedly took over the North Pole two decades after his first attempt with some very strange observations. Here's a summary of it. Flight log, base camp Arctic, 19 February, 1947. 09, 10 hours. Vast ice and snow below. Note coloration of yellowish nature and disperse in a linear pattern. Altering course for a better examination of this color pattern below. Note reddish or purple color also. Circle this area two full turns and return to assigned compass heading. Position check made and again to base camp and relay information concerning colorations in the ice and snow below. 0910 hours. Both magnetic and gyro compasses beginning to gyrate and wobble. We are unable to hold our heading by instrumentation. Took bearing with sun compass, yet all seems well. The controls are seemingly slow to respond and have sluggish quality, but there is no indication of icing. 0915 hours. In the distance is what appears to be mountains. 0949 hours. 29 minutes elapsed flight time from the first sighting of the mountains. It is no illusion. They are mountains and consisting of a small range that I have never seen before. 1000 hours. We are crossing over the small mountain range and still proceeding northward as best as can be ascertained. Beyond the mountain range is what appears to be a valley with a small river or stream running through the center portion. There should be no green valley below. Something is definitely wrong and abnormal here. We should be over ice and snow. To the port side are great forests growing on the mountain slopes. Our navigation instruments are still spinning. The gyroscope is oscillating back and forth. 1,005 hours. I alter altitude to 1400 feet and execute a sharp left turn to better examine the valley below. It is green with either moss or a type of tight knit grass. The light here seems different. I cannot see the sun anymore. We make another left turn and we spot what seems to be a large animal of some kind below us. It appears to be an elephant. No, it looks more like a mammoth. This is incredible, yet there it is. Decrease altitude to 1000 feet and take binoculars to better examine the animal. It is confirmed. It is definitely a mammoth-like animal. Report this to base camp. 1030 hours. Encountering more rolling green hills now, the external temperature indicator reads 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Continuing on our heading now, Navigation instruments seem normal now. I am puzzled over their actions. Attempt to contact base camp. Radio is not functioning. 1130 hours. Aircraft seems light and oddly buoyant. The controls refuse to respond. My God, off our port and starboard wings are a strange type of aircraft. They're closing rapidly alongside. They're disc shaped and have a radiant quality to them. 1135 hours. Our radio crackles and a voice comes through it in English with what perhaps is a slight Nordic or Germanic accent. The message is, welcome Admiral to our domain. We shall land you in exactly seven minutes. Relax Admiral, you are in good hands. I noted the engines of our plane have stopped running. The aircraft is under some kind of strange control and is now turning itself. The controls are useless. 1140 hours, another radio message received. We begin the landing process now and in moments the plane shudders slightly and begins a descent as though caught in some great unseen elevator. The downward motion is negligible and we touch down with only a slight jolt. 11.45 hours. 
I am making a hasty last entry to the flight log. Several men are approaching on foot towards our aircraft. They are tall with blonde hair. In the distance is a large shimmering city pulsating with rainbow hues of color. I do not know what is going to happen now, but I see no signs of weapons on those approaching. I hear now a voice ordering me by name to open the cargo door. I will comply. End log. From here, the diary recounts the events after landing. The author is taken by a smooth floating platform to a city of elegant futuristic technology. And after being given a mysterious beverage is asked to take counsel with some kind of alien or underworld races leader. The leader tells him that they are concerned with the human's use of nuclear weapons, power the human race is not ready for. He is asked to relay this concern to human leaders. When he is returned to the US, he's asked to keep this experience a secret. And it is only from this diary entry that we have any information on the supposed warnings of an inner earth race. We do ask that you interpret the story with an open mind, though there is no way to verify for certain that Admiral Byrd wrote this or that he experienced this. It does intersect with some interesting mysteries regarding the poles and the theories of entrances to hollow earth there. As recently as 2017, a Navy whistleblower has claimed that he saw aerial silvery disks fly over the Transantarctic mountains while stationed there from 1983 to 1997. The whistleblower believes that there is a top secret project between aliens and humans taking place at a secret base in the Antarctic. So why would aliens reside on the poles? Perhaps it's simply the most remote location where they can remain a secret. But hollow earth theorists say that the aliens are not actually from another world per se, but from within our own earth, an advanced civilization under our feet and the poles have hidden passageways to move between the upper and lower worlds. There are certainly many anomalies around the Antarctic that have been the focus of theories around aliens and government secrets. Now, as you might remember, we shared this in the Sumerian Epic. In 2018, someone browsing Fitbit's public running routes discovered that someone had been jogging around the South Pole in a very clean geometric pattern. Upon investigation, there was only snow, but the evidence was undeniable. There must be a secret underground base where that user was tracking their route. Fitbit accidentally revealed other secret US military bases, but the one in Antarctica is perhaps the most interesting. Since the others involved conflict with countries around the globe, what could possibly be going on in Antarctica that is worth keeping secret? Are there perhaps more bases scattered throughout the continent, which remains hidden from us? The mystery at the poles will continue to fuel theories about their significance regarding aliens, hollow earth, and government secrets in general. While we can't say for sure whether these theories are true or connected to each other, they certainly open the doors of imagination to what spiritual mysteries are taking place right underneath our noses. It's also inspired a great deal of pop culture with the legends of Agartha, the inner world, being made into a lovely anime movie called The Children Who Chase Lost Voices, which is actually entirely freely available to watch here on YouTube. Let's start to wrap things up with a quote from Admiral Byrd's diary entry in which he spoke of visiting the Northern entrance to hollow earth. There comes a time when the rationality of men must fade into insignificance and one must accept the inevitability of the truth. I am not at liberty to disclose the following documentation at this writing. Perhaps it shall never see the light of public scrutiny, but I must do duty and record here for all to read one day. In a world of greed and exploitation of mankind can no longer suppress that which is truth. So is the earth hollow, solid to the molten core, or just giant inner caverns with or without other beings living there? One peculiar thing worth mentioning here though, is the possibility of multidimensionality. One commonly proposed theory is that physically in the third dimension, we do have a molten core, but on the fourth dimension, the earth has a slightly different form. And there is a higher dimensional plane of existence with the world of Agartha, where third dimensionally in the same place, there is only rock. It's definitely something worth considering. Oh, and before you click away, check out this rabbit hole for a second. It's so, rabbity. Click the link in the comments below to gain access to the conspiracy theory of everything right now. It's so intense that certain episodes might get banned off of YouTube. We're not really sure. So we're doing our due diligence and putting it somewhere that no matter what, it won't be deleted. We've also got some fun bonus content in there for you and it's all entirely free. Cheerio and have a beautiful day. Doodles.